As we know, patients with inflammatory bowel disease benefit from monoclonal antibodies, especially anti-TNFs. These drugs have revolutionized the treatment of inflammatory bowel disease, including both Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Unfortunately, their pharmacokinetics is extremely complex and very variable among patients. We also have learned that there is a correlation between serum drug levels and disease activity, and this has let us optimize treatment in patients that are either not responding or that they lost response. Nevertheless, the correlation between anti-TNF levels in serum and in tissue is unknown. So the aim of the study was to look into the role and the pharmacokinetics of monoclonal antibodies, specifically anti-TNF drugs, in the intestinal tissue and its correlation with serum anti-TNF levels, TNF levels, and disease activity. So we measured serum TNF and anti-TNF levels concomitantly in serum and intestinal tissue for each patient. We did normalize tissue TNF and drug levels by measuring the human epidermal growth factor 2 in order to adjust the concentration of proteins based on the amount of epithelial tissue obtained from each sample. Overall, there was a positive correlation between serum and intestinal tissue anti-TNF. Nevertheless, this applied only to non-inflammed intestinal tissue and not to the samples with active inflammation. When looked at inflamed and non-inflamed samples individually, you can see that we found that there was a correlation between serum and non-affected tissue only. We also sub-analyzed patients on infliximab and adalimumab separately. We found a correlation between infliximab serum and tissue drug levels, but there was no significant correlation between serum and tissue adalimumab levels. A second important finding of this study is that when comparing samples from a same patient, inflamed tissue has a higher concentration of drug when compared to non-inflamed tissue. As you can see in the figure, there was no intra-individual difference between uninflamed tissue from two different sites. But this difference did exist when comparing inflamed and non-inflamed samples from a single patient. Another important finding of the study was that the ratio between tissue drug and TNF was higher in non-inflamed tissue when compared to inflamed samples. It's important to note, though, that there was a high concentration of anti-TNF when compared to TNF in all samples, inflamed and non-inflamed. In this study, we found that some patients may have sufficient drug levels in the serum, or at least levels that are considered within a therapeutic range, but they do not necessarily have enough anti-TNF in the tissue, and that is correlated with active disease. We also found that inflamed tissue has a high concentration of TNF and anti-TNF, including the fact that inflamed tissue has a higher overall concentration of anti-TNF. But the difference between affected and non-affected tissue is that the former has a higher ratio of anti-TNF to TNF. So this is why we postulate that a drug to TNF ratio is much more important than a single drug level measurement in the serum. And this correlates directly to the fact that each patient may need different doses and different aims in terms of therapy. All of this supports the treat to target strategy that we are trying to move on to as we know more about these drugs. So while the study is only a proof of concept, we do have an idea and can elaborate an hypothesis in order to go further and study more the pharmacokinetics of these drugs in the target organ, in this case the intestine.